Winning sales is all about methods and talent. And those that know me know I always talk about sales methods, sales process. I'm driving the new world leader Salesforce automation system. But I also want to talk about the concepts around bringing good talent in your organization to execute on the methods. Uh, I have Karen Benjamin here, my business partner. Uh, her focus is recruiting talent acquisition for our customers. And I just wanted to ask her a few questions on, on method versus talent and what makes good salespeople good. And uh, we'll have some fun with that. But first question to Karen is, what's more important, good method or good talent, in your opinion? My real opinion is that they're inextricably linked, that they're equally important. Because the best, you, you can have the best method in the, in the world and, and you need a method. Um, and that will help some people improve who are open to learning, but there's just raw talent in executing that method that makes it that much better. So I, I think you know the great talent combined with the great method is what makes the top 10% performers that are what we focus on bringing to our customers' teams. Describe what great talent means. What is a great salesperson? A great problem solver, someone who's very diagnostic in nature, someone who understands who they need to talk to, what kinds of questions they need to ask them, and then how to put all those pieces of information together, which on the surface may appear to be competing agendas, but how do you put those all together to bring the solution for everybody who's involved? So it's, it's a problem solver, a diagnostician, um, and someone who really wants to help that customer grow their business, and they're, they're enjoyable to work with along the way. So it feels like the customer thought of their idea themselves. So we're going to do a, a little giveaway here. All right. What are the top two or three questions that you ask candidates when mm -hmm. you're interview them, interviewing them for our customers? I, do, I mean, I ask them exactly that. I ask them when they're approaching an account, who are they talking to, and what are they asking them, and what kind of outcomes are they getting because of that. So I look for a long track record of success doing things that way. I ask them what their solutions have been about, what business problems they've solved, how many times they've done it, how many years they've done it for, how much larger those deals have become. Um, definitely look for progression. So are the solutions more complex? Are the solutions larger as they, as they go through their career? There was a question that I saw you ask, and I started using it myself mm -hmm. when interviewing salespeople. And you asked, how do you know when a deal is qualified. All right, that's a great one. I, I think that, mm -hmm. that was the, 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 the single best question that I've seen. Right, because sometimes you get deer in the headlights and sometimes you get the right answer. Right. So, so I'm the method guy. And you I'll just tell know, you, some people say. I'm the method guy and I'll tell you the answer that I'm looking for. When I ask a candidate, how do you know when a deal is qualified, I want to hear them say, when I have access to all decision makers, I understand the business objectives, the project is budgeted, it is important to, to the client. Mm -hmm. I understand who the competitors are and, and those aspects. And that tells me that they have a methodology for going in and providing solution sales for winning the big deals. Right. A good companion question for that, too, is when deals are stalled, what companion, do you do? I like that companion question. <laughs> well, thanks. That, that's new terminology here. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> so the, the companion question, the compatible question, is when deals are stalled, what do you do? Because that usually means on some level that they're unqualified. But how I'll pry more from people or learn more about how they do that, you know, is try to take them down a few layers to say, okay, you've done those things, it's still not working, your deal's still not moving, now what do you do? And do you see patterns in why deals stall? How do you get out of those patterns when those deals stall? It's about further qualification, but it's another way to learn more about their thinking and what they do when they're in trouble. It's easy to do with an easy buyer. What do they do when, when, when it's a harder situation or when you're creating demand? Some problems have many solutions um, and your company may be one of many unrelated options and, and that can be especially tricky. Yeah. Of, of all the people and, and, and salespeople that you've interviewed, mm -hmm. what percentage of them out there would you say are A-level players or top top players in the organization, what percentage of them right. would you recruit and place with our clients? I mean, maybe 10. I, it, it's very hard to find. I think, you know, organizations in general, you, you look to have 20% of your staff doing 80% of your work. And that's just, that's the way it works. And so you need those really top 10% performers. So when I'm looking for the right person for our clients, I'm trying to find out who's at the companies that are most like them and who's performing the most and who's been doing it the longest. Because it's really, I'd say 10% is generous, honestly, who really do that that well. Our, our, uh, our company is dedicated to working with CEOs of high technology firms, roughly under 150 employees, 
that have a product that they're growing and building and they're trying to grow and build a sales team to, uh, to keep pace with the complexity of their product. What, Karen, what advice mm -hmm. would you give to those CEOs about building strong sales teams? I think a lot of it is the they're looking for you to work with them and to enable their success. So if they're talking, they're going to come to you the same way. They're going to talk about the problem their customers are having and what your organization needs to be able to do, how they need to come together, what kind of resources they need, when they need executive sponsorship. But it's that support to say that if you know this person's good and you know they've done that due diligence with those customers, that you're going to work with them to bring together those resources so that that solution can be presented clearly and concisely, aligning to those business drivers to make that happen. I think the biggest worry sometimes when I'm recruiting those great salespeople is can this organization also really deliver? And so they want to know, you know that the right stuff is there. Or if it's not, they want to know they can be a part of creating it. And that's good enough. That's really good enough. Sure. What do you also think when you're, when you're seeing it? What do you also think are the things that they need from the CEOs? Sure. It's a complicated situation, right? The, the, um, the high technology companies that we're working with um, they have a difficulty bringing on good talent, mm -hmm. and also when things aren't going right, they have a difficulty diagnosing. You know, is it is it do they have the wrong method in place? Do they have right. the wrong people? Do they have the wrong product? Do they have the wrong value proposition? You know, what's working, what isn't? It's very very difficult unless you've been in sales for many many years to understand what's going wrong. Mm -hmm. My belief system is get a good repeatable method in place that's proven that you know works across the board and then look at, the t look at the talent that you have in place and see if they're able to execute on that methodology or on those processes. If, if you're trying to figure out how things work by laying a consistent sales process in place, a consistent methodology in place, then you're able to look at to see if your sales people or your sales talent are able to execute on those processes. That's right. the ability, so uh, you have to control one of those variables Controlling the methodology and then recruiting talent against it is, is the way that I think is the most consistent way. And that, yeah, that's really worked the best for our customers. And I agree, one has to become fixed because if you keep changing both sides of it, you're always aiming at a moving target. And, and that's when CEOs don't get where they want to from a sales yeah. perspective. Yeah. There's one thing we haven't talked about yet. We'll do that right now and then we'll, we'll be signing off. But you can have great talent mm -hmm. and you can have great methods. But if you don't have a fired up team right. that wants to win, that is just motivated, that goes after the business, mm -hmm. nothing works. Right. And I've consulted with customers where it became frustrating because we would get the methodology in place, we'd get the right talent, and nothing would happen. Right. And then I would just realize that this organization just isn't excited about their product, isn't excited about the market, isn't excited, and just mm -hmm. isn't excited. So what I've learned to focus our clients on, or let me say that better, is the way we get motivation into the sales team is to say to them, get more interested in your customer's success than your own. Mm -hmm. Get so focused and get so excited about, about your customer's success. When you do that, your success will come. Everything comes along when you're enthusiastic and excited about helping your customer grow and succeed. Comments? No, I mean, I definitely agree, um, is you have to have that motivation, you have to care about what you're selling, but most importantly, you have to care about solving that customer's problem. And sometimes when you come in and, and you know, get everybody riled up, it's a temporary excitement, but it has to be real. I mean, you have to really be excited about what you're doing and, and the customers that you're doing it for. At the end of the day, winners win and losers lose.